Hi everyone, it's Ryan 1940 here. Today we are going to look at uh, just the nuts and bolts of uh, ASW and War on the Sea. I've made a previous tutorial video, but that went kind of long because I was showing you how to set up a, a scenario with the battle editor and um, do a practice round and play through that. So today we're just going to talk about the main things that affect ASW in this game, and if you want to see it in practice, then you could go watch that other video. So hopefully this just kind of cuts to the chase. So there are three main things to look at. Your ships, your environment, your sensors. Now let's talk about your ships. For ASW, you must look at the ship sensors and ensure it has passive and active sonar available. You must ensure your ASW ships have depth charge capability. Not all ships in the game have depth charges, and not all ships in the game have sonar sensors. Some ships have one or the other. For instance, the Japanese Agana Light Cruiser class can carry depth charges, but has no sonar system. For ASW, you should avoid ships like this. Also consider destroyers that hold larger amounts of depth charges. These, just like torpedoes or shells, are finite in number. This is also the reason that it is a good idea to work in small groups of destroyers that have sonar sensors plus depth charges. You'll have more depth charges available to use, and if one destroyer runs dry, you can use that ship to shadow the enemy submarine while the other destroyers conduct their attack runs on it. I've suggested on the forums that you're told the max capacity of depth charges up front when you're attempting to buy a ship, but presently you can check this out by hopping into the museum mode and manually looking at a destroyer to see its depth charge capacity. Now that we've discussed what makes a good ASW ship, let's talk about the environment. This will make or break you when hunting for subs. At the start and throughout the entire battle, we can see the environmental conditions present. We can see if it is clear or overcast, etc. But of all the weather conditions, the one of main importance is if it is raining or not. If it is raining, your sonar performance will be degraded by 50%. That is because of the increase in the ambient environmental noise from the rain. The sea state also affects the performance of our sonar suite. The ideal is a glassy sea state of zero. As the sea state increases, the performance of our sonar is affected by an increase in ambient noise due to wave action, and also an increase of noise against your hull mounted sensors as you smash through the waves. If the sea state is high between 6 to 8, you'll notice a significant drop off in detection ranges. The next three values of major importance in the weather conditions are the layer depth, the layer strength, and the duct strength. In real life, there are surface layers and other temperature layers that can form because of the weather, the day-night cycle, currents, different water masses interacting with each other, etc. In this game, we've got the possibility of surface layers. The layer depth is the bottom of that surface layer. That means the temperature from the surface to that layer depth, as listed, is all the same. Below that, the temperature begins to change, and as you go deeper and deeper, it'll end up being isothermal again. In the game, as in real life, sonar is affected by this boundary layer of different temperatures. Sound rays can be scattered or reflected while attempting to cross the boundary, so overall performance is degraded when searching for targets on the opposite side of the boundary. This means the submarine has a harder time detecting you if they are underneath the layer depth, and you also have a harder time detecting them if they've gone below that layer depth. In the game, this degradation of performance is calculated by the layer strength value. That will give you the percentage of performance degradation against normal conditions. So if the layer strength was 0.70, that means we will suffer a 30% loss in detection range if the sub goes below that layer depth. Now if a submarine is above that layer depth and closer to the surface, it could potentially detect us at longer ranges and we could potentially detect it at longer ranges. This is all figured by a value called the duct strength. This will give you a percentage value to calculate the increase in performance over normal conditions. So if the duct strength was 5.0, that means we have a 400% increase in detection range over normal conditions. So if normally we were able to detect a contact at 4,000 yards, we would be able to detect it at 20,000 yards. When you have a large duct strength value, these are the conditions most ideal to hunt submarines. So we've taken a look at ships and the environment. Let's talk about the two sonar sensor types, what they do and how they're affected in performance. The first sensor is the passive sonar system. On destroyers, these were hydrophones that were used to listen for the noise of enemy submarines. In the game, this is the primary search sensor that you should use to find submarines. Keep in mind, the ranges of detection in normal conditions are likely a couple thousand yards against a quiet submarine. Some conditions can help increase detection ranges. One is the contact speed. If the contact is running at max speed, you're more likely to detect him because of the increase in noise the submarine is producing. 
Another condition that affects your detection range is also related to speed. It's your own ship speed. As you increase speed, your detection ranges diminish. I found 12 knots is the highest I'd want to go using Japanese destroyers to search for a contact. If you conduct high-speed runs to close an enemy submarine, or were evading a torpedo, it's important to remember to slow back down so your hydrophone has a chance to reacquire the target. The final bit that affects the passive sonar system are the baffles. I think it's safe to assume at least 15 degrees on either side of the stern is blocked out from any detection. This is because in real life, if we listen directly aft, all you'll hear is noise from own ship. All the engineering noises, all the prop noises, and things like that. So it's useless to try to find a quiet submarine behind all that. The other sonar sensor we have is the active sonar. Just like radar, not all ships are equipped with such sensors. For the Japanese destroyers I use, under the best conditions the range is listed at 1 nautical mile or approximately 2,000 yards. This is a very short range sensor in the best conditions, so it should not be used for primary search. You can use it at close range for a depth charge run, but it isn't necessary if you've got a second ship holding track of the enemy submarine during the attack. Just like passive sonar, we are affected by some of the same conditions. Our own speed will affect the performance. If we go too fast, we will reduce the range of detection. And if the submarine's going fast, that is good for us. The active sonar needs Doppler for it to be effective. If the submarine goes dead in the water, you'll find it difficult to maintain a track. The active sonar is also affected by a baffle plate, and you cannot see behind own ship. Keep this in mind when you roll over a target in a depth charge run. Without another ship maintaining the track in the background, you will lose the track of the contact. The final bit that isn't listed for passive sonar in the manual but does affect active sonar is the aspect. The target aspect plays into detection ranges. If the target is more broadside to you and presenting its beam, you'll have more area to ping against versus if it was coming straight at you or going straight away. In real life, aspect also affects passive sonar, but at least in the game manual, it doesn't say that it does, so I'll assume passive sonar isn't affected by it. So we've learned about what ships we want to choose for ASW, we've learned how they are affected by the environment, and we've learned how the sensors work and what other conditions the target or own ship can do to affect performance. I hope this helps clarify sonar operation in the game, and if you'd like to see it in action in a lengthier gameplay version, I'll add that video to the end screen here. Thank you for watching, and if you found anything helpful, please like and subscribe to help this channel grow. We'll catch you later.